morning my Lomo family. I'm sure you can tell that I have a new hat on. Oh, new ranch gear. I had to get me a new one, my other one was losing the shape. Couldn't keep it shape. Did the uh, original steaming and uh, framing on it, but just in the end, got a new one. Um, picked up by my girlfriend. So, that's always a plus. I uh, wanted to reach out to everyone today and uh, thank everyone for all the love and support that you guys have given me. I know that the pain and the suffering of just going through everyday life is hard and I'm sorry I haven't been posting like I used to, but I've been trying. Um, I wanted to thank everyone who has stuck with me through the highs and lows and understood my pain and understood that I'm a working man and that I have a life to live. I don't just post on here. So thank you guys for being patient and working with me on that. Um, today, I decided I'm going to go ahead and talk about Sorry, it's a little shaky. Um, but today, I'm going to talk about good old ranch life. Also known as, well, not really ranch life, but it's more of what not to do as a ranch hand. And it's going to be regarding women, regarding horses, and regarding work. Whenever you first start as a ranch hand, the first thing you'll get is a cowboy hat. This cowboy hat will symbolize who you are. You are to never let the cowboy hat hit the ground if you can prevent it. You are to never just let the cowboy hat sit around. And you are to always respect the cowboy hat. Especially when the flag plays, you take it off and put it over your heart. At a funeral, you place your hat at a tip on your head. If it's raining, if it's not, you take your hat off and you hold it down. During prayer, you do the same thing. Take your hat off, hold it at your leg. Um, the other thing is anytime you enter a room, you take your hat off. Never wear your hat around the house unless you own the house or you are given permission to wear the hat around the house. Finally, don't ever, and I mean never, ever throw your hat at somebody. Sure, you see it in Western movies where they throw it in disguise and they shoot through the hats. Don't ever do that. That's a disgrace to the country religion and the way of the hat. And always maintain your hat. Maintain your hat. Keep it clean. Keep it shaped. Keep it at your lip for the rain to drip off and keep the bill in the back flat. Um, we're going to move from the hat to the horses. If you ever have horses or you're a first time horser, horse trainer, or just somebody who bought a horse to have for the kids to ride, there's three things you want to make sure you don't do. One, don't get a crazy horse. You never want a crazy horse for your first horse. They're going to be the hardest to break. I would say get an older horse. A horse that's been taught a lot. That's an older, aged horse. Uh, that way you can work with them and learn more on an older horse. And that older horse will correct you. It will. There are horses that have... The older the horse, the more knowledge the horse has. And sure, from horse from house to house, regarding uh, horses, there are differences in what the horse's abilities are. But in the end, I'd rather have an older horse than a young horse that wants to buck me off every two seconds. Because the youngest horses are going to give me the most problems. The oldest are going to be nice and gentle. Another thing regarding horses is pay attention to the sexuality. You treat mares different than you do gildens. 
That's a big, big deal. Um, so a mayor, you want to be cautious because mayors are female horses. Gildens are male horses. Just want to clear that up because people are going to look at me like I'm crazy. That's all right. Um, mayors are just like women. Quick to temper. Um, if you ever, if you go and watch my TikToks, you will see on one of my TikToks, you'll hear whining in the background, and you'll see it almost looks like a horse is kicking at the fence. The white horse is the guild, the gray horse was the mayor, and she was nipping at him only because he walked up to her. That was it. They got a short temper, all mayors do. There are some mayors that don't, but a lot and most mayors do. Um, if you do get a gilding, they are going to be the rowdiest. They're going to want to play. They're going to want to not listen all the time. It's just, mayors listen. They listen, but they temper easy. Gildens, they don't temper easy, but they don't listen either. So, it's kind of a double-edged sword, in my opinion. But if I had a pick, I would go with the mayor because in the end, mayors are the prettiest. They do come out the prettiest and they've always, they've always run things um, and they're easier to work with because they're subtle unless you, you know, piss them off. Another thing is regarding age. Starting, like I said, older horse best. If you are kind of decent, I would. So I would start with older and go to younger. If you are a good, experienced horseman, go with the young horse. Teach them from an early age. People are like, but wouldn't it be the other way? No, it would not. Horses aren't like dogs. They say you can't teach an old, a dog, an old dog, new tricks. It's the other way around with horses. It's harder to teach a young horse because they will give you the most stubborn time because they don't want to listen they want to do what they want to do compared to an older horse who has been taught how to mind and how to listen to you another thing is it doesn't matter what horse you get what age or not the first thing you do with a horse and I don't give a rip who tells you this is what I was taught and this is the way I believe it should be you don't just beat them no, you don't do that. First thing you do is you put a halter on. A halter is a rope attached to a harness that you put around the horse's snot. It does not hurt them. It just helps them, it just guides them. It's like a dog leash, it doesn't hurt them. You, you make them walk in a circle around you. You show them, hey, I'm boss, I'm gonna turn you, I'm gonna make you go whatever way I want you to go, I'm gonna make you stop where I want to stop. And you work them two hours, three hours on end, um, from walking to cantering or trotting. Don't ever worry about them pulling you over. They will not. They don't like the slightest pressure on that lead. They don't. It doesn't hurt them. It just feels weird. They don't like that. You can also have a spanker to show, hey, don't try me. Or you can use the end of the rope. If you have a really nice long lead, which I love. I love long leads with leather straps on the ends. Those things make little cracks whenever you hit them on your pants. It will spook the horse and they will see, oh, hey, he's in charge. I shouldn't be doing nothing I shouldn't be doing. Um, that is your best choice for your first deal. That's how you break them. Don't ever just throw a saddle on a horse and start riding. Don't. That's one way to the emergency room. I swear, I've seen it, it's not pretty always warm up your horse after you do that start with the blanket then you start with the blanket and the pad then you start with an empty saddle with the blanket and the pad here's the thing you strap you strap down the saddle lightly so the saddle can turn on its side or whatnot so the horse feels that and they go oh hey this is a different sensation i don't like this but over time they'll realize oh hey this is normal the moment the person goes on and they start to feel you controlling them with your hips and your legs and your thighs, feet, the reins, the spurs, they will realize, okay, he's in control. I can't be fighting him. If they 
notice you if you get lopsided on your saddle and you fall off if you even just do that once the next time you do that the horse will actually try to help you and he will the horse he or she will stop or she he will shift to the side so you can reset your saddle the reason why is because it's just like even in the movies they do this it sounds stupid but it's honestly the truth a horse is not going to trample you cows will a horse will look at you as an object if you throw yourself in front of a horse they will jump you but if you throw yourself in front of a cow or a bull you are better off going six feet under it's the way they are it's always best to know where your foundations are regarding horses bond with your horse don't just go out there and train it. no spend time out there with it watching it graze feeding it apple slices actually chop up the apples they can choke on the chunks um carrots small carrots and make sure they're small enough to where they won't get in the airway and kill them like there are so many things you can do with the horse to help make a horse a stronger partner for you finally women they're just like horses short tempered easy to make mad I don't want you to go into this world thinking oh heck I can't date women because they're going to be issues causing no that's not true what's true is that if you don't set yourself up with a woman and make sure she knows that you're never going to hurt her or you're here to help her not you know destroy her she won't listen she won't in fact she will she will judge you for the rest of her life it's what they do don't feel bad so it's not your fault like i said i'm dating this my wonderful angel and she had a screwed up past she was burnt by men over and over and over and when we first started talking she was scared of me she didn't know i was here to help her so i had to prove myself and i did and now she's the happiest woman in the world and to be honest i don't i don't force her i don't force anything on her i treat her right i make sure that she's gonna be okay never ever ever purposely hurt a woman don't payback stupid don't do it there's only one thing i've learned in my entire life about payback it's always gonna hurt someone next thing you know you're a target that's how it is i tell people all the time i've told women that want to pay back on men you're just digging yourself a hole that's deeper. And you're making yourself out to be toxic. And my sister recently, I posted a TikTok on this. My sister recently was being a jerk to me about my girl. She was spreading lies and stuff about my girl. And I didn't like it. I stuck up with it for a little bit. Eventually, I said enough is enough. And I called her out on it. And I broke ties with her. I wasn't going to deal with that anymore. But she called me toxic just because I wanted to cut ties because she was lying to me and I simply told her before I cut off ties a toxic man is a man who controls a woman but a toxic woman is a woman who gets to con who doesn't I should put it this way a toxic man is a man who controls a woman but women can't be toxic when they control men that is wrong it is it goes both ways my girl does not control me and I don't control my girl it's a 50 50 relationship that is the way it should be on every relationship that is the simplest sweetest loving relationships and sure I get her a little upset sometimes as a country guy I love to go fish and I fish a lot more than I do hang out with her on the phone and I'll be honest. Is that bad of me? Yeah. At the same time, I enjoy it. Because here's how I look at it. There's a day in the future when I want to be so good that I can teach our own son 
how to fish. And I want to be able to teach my own son how to be a pro fisherman. Because what if he wants to go into that field? What if he wants to go into the pro fishing field? I want, I'm not bashing my dad, but my dad doesn't fish a lot. He barely fishes. He golfs more than he fishes, but I fish more than I golf. I don't golf. That's not something that interests me, and fishing doesn't interest him as much. And we will go fishing most likely Saturday coming up together, just me and him, father and son bonding. And I want to be able to, anytime I'm not working and my son says, Dad, can we go fishing? I want to be able to get right up out of that chair and say, let's go. Let's take care of the horses and we'll go fishing. And I'll ask your mother if you want to go, if she wants to go. And if the mama says, yeah or no, it doesn't matter. Because if she wants to come join, she can join. If she doesn't, she can stay home with the girls. It's the way it is. The world doesn't always revolve around a single person, but a group of people who make up the world. That's the way it is. So men, don't ever feel like you can't date a woman because she's going to be rude to you. Not all women are. Just know your boundaries and how to treat them. And you know what? Don't take literally the same deal of putting a halter on a woman and stuff like a horse halter. Don't do not do that. That's not what I'm about to say. Treat a woman like a mare. A female horse. Respect, patience, and kindness, and love. The only thing with that is that mares are easy to anger, and so are women. They're the same type of deal. They got the same gene in them. I find that pretty incredible. As a Christian, that's God's deal right there. God made that. And I think that's awesome. So don't judge a woman for being who she is. In fact, stand with her. And fight off the people who judge her. I guarantee it will make her life a lot easier. And she'll look at you with love, affection, and and happiness because you'll see I have a man who will treat me right don't ever treat a woman wrong you never have to this is Mitchell Lone Wolf Ranch y'all have a great day God's bless and I will see you guys in the next one